What's good, Ken Gonda? It's your boy, L.S.J. Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of Dear African Americans. And today, I really want to have a conversation with you about taking Africa serious and coming to the continent of Africa with your A game. The reason why I want to talk about this is because recently I visited Expat Assist and Tina was nice enough to host me to talk to her about what are the requirements that somebody from the diaspora would make to create a business in Uganda. And we found out that there is a $50,000 threshold for normal business if you're a foreigner and a hundred thousand dollars that you need to have if you want an investor's license. Now, those people who get an investor's license, uh, they, they get tax breaks and things like that, which I felt was relatively low. We then had people, however, who complained about that amount of money. They were saying, well, we should be able to move back to Africa with less money than that. We shouldn't be able, you know, we should be able to do that freely without having that much money. Look at Israel and all the other things. Now, I understand your point. But, but I think that most people have an attitude that competition is not so fierce on the continent of Africa. And what I'm getting is because you believe that you might feel that you're from America, you're from Britain, or you're from a much developed place, your college education and your experience, you know, all you need is a little bit of money and you're going to figure it out when you get to the continent. I would assume that you're very sadly mistaken because I want to prove to you that there are people who come to the continent of Africa way prepared. I want to talk about these two guys here that are the founders of Seiboda. It's co-founded with actually a Ugandan owner, but there's three. The two main guys, in my opinion, are the real brains behind the investment of the operation. The first one is Alastair Sessat. The guy is an economics graduate of Oxford University. He worked as a consultant for the Rwandan government, okay? He also managed global development funds in Ethiopia and Accra, Ghana, from what I understand. All right? That's another that's that's one person. The next person you're you're competing against is somebody like Maxime, okay? He's a Belgian guy. Went to one of the best schools in Europe in Belgium for finance and economics. He also worked with, you know, funds and hedge funds in Africa. He also consulted with, you know, certain governments. People like this, they don't have the mindset that they're coming to Africa with $15,000 or they're coming to Africa with $5,000. No, they come to Africa with their best foot forward. They go to their schools, the best schools they can go to. And then what happens is once they get here from that education they have, they have built connections and networks for people to fund their projects like Safe Boda. Remember I told you about Safe Boda? Safe Boda was able to get funded because those guys had so much connection and networks in the market, they were instantly able to fund it millions of dollars to start Safe Boda. And you're telling me that what you're trying to do is come over to the continent of Africa with less than $20,000 or $10,000 and you're gonna compete with a person like that? How are you gonna compete with a person that is very, very intelligent, high IQ, has connections, has access to money, and has a lot of respect from government officials. Like once you start consulting governments like Rwanda or Uganda or Tanzania, people roll open the door for you to come in and develop in the country. A person like yourself or myself, we can't compete like that, right? So we have to put our best foot forward. And I think the issue is that a lot of people in the diaspora are looking to come back to Africa, but you're not even taking it that serious, some of you. What do you know about branding and marketing and certain strategies? See, people like this understand all of that and they have perfected it. I think people think that, well, I'm going to come to the continent of Africa, I'm going to just start a business, and then I will be that. But you don't really understand the market. You don't understand the language. You don't understand a lot of the things that go on. And people like this, that co-fund and start hedge funds, they start business capitals, they, they consult governments, they have an advantage over you, and they have money. The Chinese, they come over with... A lot of experience, some of them. A lot of money. They have an advantage. The Lebanese, they come over with a lot of money and a lot of experience. They have an advantage. The Indians come over with a lot of money. They've been here for many years. They have a lot of experience. They're still tied to their culture. 
So when you want to come back and you say, well, I want to come back to Africa because I believe I deserve to be there, you're competing against bet top-notch people. Don't, don't, don't get it confused that just because you're coming back to Africa and some people are poor and you know what you see there, you might be doing better than an average person. You're probably not doing better than the top people. And that's the thing. If you're coming back to the continent, you have to understand the best people are here. A lot of top people are here. The Ugandan government, yeah, people that are elite here, they have money, they have went to school, they're coming back. Everybody in each country you're coming back, you're competing against somebody. And if your competition game is not the best, you will fail, all right? You will fail. So you need to give yourself the best chance to be successful in whatever you do. And a lot of people need to take this serious. You need to work really hard. You need to be very, very bright. You need to be very, very fulfilled when it comes to economics. And then you also need connections, all right? That's what the white guys that you see here have. And that's why they're able to build, say, Boda into a really successful brand in Uganda and Kenya, because they have the education. They are very smart. They have a lot of money. They have access to money. They do know government officials. And if you don't have that, you can never get to that level if you don't have that kind of money and that kind of capital. You can lie to yourself and say that's the truth, but it's not. So the thing about it is, is that we need to make sure that brothers and sisters understand that the competition for money and the competition for smaller markets is fierce. And you need to be very, very good at whatever you're doing. Guys, that's my time for today. It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of Dear African Americans. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, um, comment below, and let me know what you think. I know this is a controversial topic. A lot of people are not going to like this, but I just got to be real and tell the truth. Uh, because we don't want to mislead people here on this channel. We want you to be successful. If you want to come back to the continent of Africa, you want to come to Uganda or Kenya or any of the countries, I think similar ways work for similar countries, but we want you to be the most prepared, right? Because there are going to be things on your journey that can stop you or help you from being unsuccessful. I don't want you to just, um, you know, come here and, and fail. You need to understand that uh, there's a certain level of, uh, of, of, of talent, a certain level of, um, of, of skill set, a certain level of innovation that's happening here. I mean, Africa is the, you know, the continent of Africa is developing very, very rapidly. You know, I, I've been coming here for three years. Kampala looks different every day. Every time I leave and come back, it looks different. The airport looks different. The Entebbe Road is different. So people here are bright. You know, they're just smart like anywhere else. And if you're not ready for that, you're going to lose. So um, subscribe at the bell, comment below, and always remember, keep it real, King Ghana forever. I'm out.